Hello, welcome back to BS Live. Um, in this episode, I'm going to share with you this uh, pipeline idea that I'm thinking. Um, basically, I will do something um, over here. Um, I have this um, external text editor. I'm using Sublime Text. Basically, it can be any text editor. And I have, um, I have some kind of text here. And I'm gonna type something. Hello, Suzanne. And I'm gonna save this. And I'm just going to jump into terminal over here and I'm going to run a command. So Blender, uh, run in the background and then look at this blend file called mytext.blend and then run this um, capital P Python code, which is a BS export and BS export. It look, it's looking something like this and I'm going to run this. So you can see it's a uh, it's running something and it's it says um, updating text, exporting OBJ, and then converting OBJ to USDZ USDZ or whatever uh, you call it. So what's the result? Um, if I jump into my root folder, I will get this USDZ, and it says hello Suzanne. And this is not something that I prepared earlier. This is actually on the fly. So this is kind of automatic. So I'm typing like four lines. Automatic, save. Uh, I, I remember I, I need to save the text and then I run the command again. It's running something in the background and just wait a few seconds. It's generating Again, it's, it is actually generating um, an OBJ. Before we have uh, Hello Suzanne, and this one is actually new. And as a result, we have this USDZ. Um, I just need to wait a few seconds more because it's still processing. The USDZ is, of course, is a format. It's a 3D format for Apple iOS 12, and it is for um, displaying 3D very very quickly. It's like a zip for 3D. There you go. And then uh, everything is actually done automatically and I don't even open Blender and that's a uh, how how did I do that? So basically the idea is that to think of Blender like a like a box or like a node like a container where you can send an input and you're getting back an output. The input is of course the this external text without I'm not normally you, you would like to open blender let me open blender actually and I'll open the actual file so this is the file I'm actually using animation nodes here and you can see there's a Susan head I can change the Susan head and maybe make a couple more Susan head so So yeah, the text itself, if we have a bunch of lines of text, the text will kind of grow go grow upward. The baseline will always be um, at the bottom. So we can have multiple Susan head there. Uh, actually, I'm not going to put too many because it's going to be slow. But I can put it down there. That means Susan is going to be at the bottom. Save it. So. This animation nodes is looking at the text external ex, text external txt, and whenever this one is updated, see um, in Blender in blend um, in blend file itself, when you are inside Blender, you can see interface and everything can be interactive. You can see the preview of the result, so that's nice. And you can always like file export it, but um, every steps actually matters. And because it's the same step over and over again, you can kind of, you can automate it. And as th this is one thing that you need to know. There is this thing called uh, this button when external text is out of sync. That means there's a change outside um, uh, on the external text. Resolve the conflicts. That means it's updated. You can reload it. So, so this is the updated text, right? So that's how you normally work. Normally, you can uh, kind of write write down like a uh, welcome to Blender, save it, 
And then Blender knows text has been changed, so we need to resolve the conflict. We load it, and we have this. Welcome to Blender. And I'm actually doing this on the fly, the, the way I set it up so that, uh, let me say, thanks for watching. And I'm saving, I need to save the text each time. And then if I run the command here, Blender, run in the background. I don't even use open Blender. Blender is running in the background, just like when you are doing like a render, rendering in the background. It's the same thing, except in this case, I'm actually exporting OBJ. So there is an OBJ. And then there's also another extra Python script that's uh, kind of generating USDZ. It's still like, using the basic uh, material, etc. But everything is becoming very stream streamlined. So this is the USDZ. Again, this is a USDZ, so I can kind of airdrop it into my iPhone, iPad. Let's uh, test it out. I have my iPhone here, and I can save it into files app. Save it into USDZ. And okay, you cannot see my iPhone yet. I will do a uh, screen mirroring into my MacBook. Then the Sushi iPhone 7 Plus has connected. This is a uh, USB Z. Okay, this is my iPhone. And we have the 3D. And yeah, and then we can turn it into AR drop our 3d and there you go that's a uh, that's everything is real time that's um this is actually tracking my macbook pro i'm always using it this way because uh, the keyboard of macbook pro is actually pretty good for this kind of thing so you can see suzanne is actually under the floor the text is actually um on the base on the floor <coughs> excuse me um today a little bit cold um anyhow this is the process and if i actually if I close this for a bit, um, close. Let me try one more time. So, this is really awesome. I'm gonna add a, a line there so the text is um, a little bit higher. And Suzanne, I'm just gonna put it on the side. We know that the text is gonna update itself save the the blend so there is actually a blend file in the background and the blend files can look at the nodes animation nodes stretch off whatever data whatever processing is happening on the fly when you open blender um, in my case we have this uh, bs export this is the python code it's really simple the first one i actually this one will will update the external scripts. I got this script by searching, just googling, and there's actually one guy uh, posting. Here's like a blend Blender script, Python script that's uh, Blender BPY that can update uh, the text, resolve the conflict. So that's the operations. The second one is just exporting every mesh as OBJ. And then the third one, just sending um, this command into terminal, XC run, USDZ converter, my OBJ, and this guy will result in the USDZ. So here we go. That's the result. Um, yeah, and then, of course, try again, I'll drop it. This is USDZ. USDZ will just open on iPhone or iPad. So this becoming kind of interesting because everything is becoming so simple and of course we don't have animation yet and then this one doesn't have uh... oh let me mirror it it doesn't have proper material um, it supports the PBR and all kind of uh, basic material but the whole process is automated so it's in a way I'm kind of like a creating um, exporter, OBJ exporter, but uh, uh, the material is not working with the, sometimes there is a bug where I couldn't switch to AR. Okay, this time it works. 
So it needs to find the ground, move the icon, it drops the pin, and there you go. So we have the shadow. Um, I have another idea where I have this text kind of rotating by itself, although the shadow doesn't come with it because uh, because of many reasons. But uh, that's gonna be for the next video. So this is this is how it works, right? So let's just close this, turn off reflector. So let me maybe recap what's actually happening. So we have external tags. We already have. We also have blend files already set up. And it's actually animation nodes in the background. Remember this: animation nodes can update the text, and animation nodes can also understand the text bounding box. And you can add some particles and then ex export it out. So that can be an interesting idea. Maybe I'm using. I'm gonna be using sphere chalk as well. So the text can be anything. Any multiple lines will work, and this text will be exported as obj and then also uh, it's gonna generate your usdz uh, in between uh, there's actually um, usda being generated by usdz converter so that's interesting and usda is of course something that you can read this is the this is the usda it's very simple it says there's a scene um, with the default primitive suzanne and this is the suzanne data there's actually two Susan and there's text. Uh, yeah, that's USDA before it's become USDZ. Inside USDA, that's where you want to put material, shader, textures, all kind of, all linking into different um, image files to generate a proper 3D with all the uh, with all the shaders and materials. So we are taking care of the mesh. The texture next time we want to tackle animations procedural animations and maybe join or alembic kind of bake animations usda can actually handle that and then um, in a lot of pixar examples really the the point is if you have like a room with a lot of objects how you do you how is the easiest way to combine everything you know if, you, if the room has 100 objects how, how do you put it into a single file that you can still manage and you can still add variations you can still go back to the original file whether you are using blender maya houdini whatever it should just work so yeah so that's the whole talk on this but uh, i like the automation and then this this is still new and i'm not really doing anything particularly complex but uh, this is the first time i'm doing it so i'm able to run blender and convert doing export obj and then convert it into usdz all in one go so that's uh, interesting and so yeah hopefully this is useful and inspiring let me know what you think and i'll see you next time thank you bye